me so close And I don't wanna take a trip in the world But I can love you Yeah, I'm gonna love you I'll give you the world of what I've got The friends and friends, baby, I have not Hey everybody, welcome back to the AJHB channel. Today we're going to take a dive into an e-bike review, which is a little bit different from what I normally do, but considering the Suron has been my primary ride for the last year, uh, I'd like to explore what else is out there besides a Suron. Like what other e-bikes can we ride from day to day, commuting, off-road, etc. So today we have the Rave Bullet, which currently sits at around $1,200, which is significantly less than the Super 73. I consider this to be an alternative to the Super 73, although if you want to compare apples to apples, there's a lot of differences as far as the width of the seat, uh, everything else as far as miles per hour, range, battery capacity, all that stuff essentially is the same thing. So first things first, we're gonna cover who is this bike for? This bike is for anybody who's looking to commute and anybody who's looking for a little bit of adventure. And when I say adventure, I mean light trail riding, if you're just trying to cut corners a little bit, get from here to there. But if you're trying to do something gnarly like a full blown mountain bike trail, I probably would not advise you do that just because as you can see there is no rear suspension but don't worry i've already tested that for you in case you're going to do it anyway so let's talk about the comfort of this bike what's it actually like to ride the rave bullet well first off the seat is very large and comfortable i'd say you could ride this for at the very least an hour if you're used to riding for longer or you frequently take motorcycle rides or frequently do longer bike rides you could probably do a little bit more but for the rest of us i would say at the very least one hour it's also very agile you could take some pretty sharp turns comfortably it rides exactly like a regular bicycle but with an electric feature it has seven gears and three modes of pedal assist so one being the lowest three being the highest obviously if you're in the third mode that pedal assist is going to kick in with a little bit more power versus if you're in mode one it's going to kick in with a little bit of less power it's got a very low seat height sitting at 30.7 inches. So for anybody who's 5'2", you are perfectly okay to ride this bike. If you're on the higher end of 5'10", you should still be okay. Your knees probably will not hit the handlebars. And speaking of the handlebars, they are high rise. They're swept back, easy to reach controls with a great turn radius, and it's very ergonomic. So this bike is coming in at 75 pounds. That is with the battery already in the bike. So if you're a small person or you're loading it by yourself, it should be pretty easy. Although I would probably recommend help if you're on the smaller side. I was able to lift the bike into a six inch lifted truck bed by myself. Although I did need some help with somebody in the bed grabbing the bars as they kind of turned when I was trying to load them in. But other than that, if you have a ramp or somebody to help you, this bike is very, very light and you could probably lift it yourself. So next up, we're gonna dive into the look and style of the bike. It's got a timeless and modern look with a moto style headlight. It's got this retro look with a custom designed seat. It's got no excess wires, very clean and minimal. And the available colors it comes in are black, green, yellow, and red. For this next part, I have prepared quite a few stress tests. So let's just dive right into those. First up, we have the steep hill test on the dirt. I was set up in mode three and I made it up halfway, but I ended up needing some help with just pushing the bike up. But obviously this bike is not built for steep dirt hills. So as long as you avoid that, you should be perfectly fine. Next up, we have the bike lane commute. I started in mode one and worked my way up to mode three using the pedal assist. And there was a slight incline on this hill and I would say that this bike handled it with ease. So now up to the more interesting part of these tests. I took the bike down some light trails. That means more so along the lines of a fire road. So less bumps is better because there is no rear suspension. So obviously the smoother the trail, the easier it's gonna be for you. And lastly, the mountain bike trail. This is a complete do not do. This is a no-go. All I did was take it down a steep hill, and I must say, 
it kind of hurts your back a little bit, so I would not recommend doing anything that requires rear suspension. Now it is time to go over the specs of the bike for those of you who are wondering about the full specifications. The motor is a 500 watt, 55 newton meter torque, which basically translates to it goes approximately 25 miles an hour. Although the bike can be unlocked to go faster, it's a very easy, simple process. They have a downloadable PDF that is literally three steps. I've already went ahead and done that, and I will tell you, it. I've reached a max speed of 32 on this. So it'll give you between five and seven extra miles per hour. The battery is a 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery, which means you could go approximately 25 miles and that'll take around six and a half hours to fully charge. For the front suspension, we have a coil spring suspension with 40 millimeters of travel. Uh, it being a coil spring basically means it is not your traditional motorcycle type of fork. So there are springs in there. So that means you're kind of limited to what you could do. So obviously, like I said before, you can't just scale down the side of a mountain bike trail, but you can do some light commuting, or sorry, do commuting and light trail riding. The brakes here are mechanical disc brakes with electric cutoff sensor. So once you pull the brakes in, it's going to cut all power. That just ensures you don't accidentally pull the brake and hit the throttle at the same time and then just kind of like go flying off the bike. You're not gonna whiskey throttle yourself. For the tires, they have given us these fat knobby tires made by CST. They're 20 inches by four inches, which gives plenty of traction on the street and plenty of traction on light trails. The throttle is a grip twist, which I actually prefer over the thumb press just because most motorcycles traditionally have a twist throttle. So I'm kind of more accustomed to that type of throttle, which makes it easier for me. So if you guys are in the same boat, this will be super easy for, for you to ride. Now for the display, it features an LCD screen. You could see your battery level, what mode you're in, your miles per hour and your total trip. Now that we've talked about all the specifications and the capabilities of this bike, let's talk about the cons that I have with this bike. The good thing is I only have two real cons with this bike. And the first one being is if you are pedaling and you are going downhill, once that pedal assist kicks in and you reach a very high speed, once if you start pedaling again, it doesn't actually kick in any more power. And then if you pull the throttle, it actually doesn't push in any more power either. What you would need to do is you'd have to put the mode into a higher mode and then continue pedaling. That way it kicks in a little bit more power. So if you're hitting a downhill, and you're at max speed, it's not gonna give you any more power. That's the only con that I have, and especially if you're already in mode three, there's really nothing you could do about it, except for to pull the brakes and then kind of start over. The second and last con that I have is the brakes to me seem a little bit weak. I have found that you have to pull the brakes in really, really hard for it to actually brake hard, or I have to use both brakes if I'm going 30 plus miles an hour and I need to come to a full complete stop. But to fix that, you could always replace the brakes if you really wanted to and get better brakes. But if you have no intention of going that fast or hitting downhills, then you should be perfectly fine. Um, overall, I would say this is a great bike. It's really fun to ride. My mom has ridden it, my husband's ridden it, I've ridden it, we've taken it all over the place. And I will say, this is probably the best bang for your buck. If you're looking something that's looking for something that's super clean, super minimal, rides easy, doesn't take a lot of time to charge and can handle most of everything that you put it through, this would be your bike. Like I said, it's running at $1,200, but if you are looking to pick one up today, go ahead and click the link in my description below and that'll save you some extra money if you're looking to get yourself a new Ray Bullet. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video and please let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments below um that's pretty much it i'll see you guys later peace very I'll be that young rapper dude might just trap with you coming with the thunder baby